So hi everyone, and thanks Marcel for introductions. So, and I'm glad to be here today to present our work. And this is the flow, uh, unifying costs and tools for GABO circuits. So this work, we focus on secure, to secure computations, especially for malicious setting. And this is uh, a joint work with Vlad, Zephyr, Mike, and Roberto. So uh, let's start with the basic definitions. What secure two-party computation is? So we have, uh, here we have two parties, uh, Alice and Bob, uh, with private inputs, uh, at and Y. And now they want to compute some functions on their private inputs while keeping their input private from each other. So I mean here, Alice, Alice doesn't know Bob inputs, and Bob, uh, and similarly, Bob doesn't know Alice's input. Uh, so here to party PSI have a lot of big applications. And now, my favorite one is private database queries. So we can think that Alice have the database X. So the database here may be the user or matrix or personal data. And uh, this is the sensitive database. So it cannot be, uh, it, it should be private. And on the other side, we have Bob, who have the query Y. And now Bob wants to find out some colorations between uh, between a location or biometrics. So this one can be solved using uh, secure two-party computations. Um, and there, there, there are several pro, uh, protocols for secure computations. And this work uh, builds on Zhao Gabo circuit protocols, which is introduced by Zhao in 2000, no, oh, sorry, in 1982. And the idea is to present the function to be computed by a Boolean circuit. So we say let A in the box mean his, uh, the encoding of A. Uh, and Java protocol works F follow. So I'll, Bob first uh, gobble the function F. So, and this is essentially the function, the circuit that can be computed without revealing anything about what actually inside or what's going on inside. So Bob sent the circuit to Alex and to get together with his encoding. So for example, here we have y equal to 1, 1, and 0. So Bob sent the encoding of 1, 1, 0 to Alex. Oh, and next step is Alice and Bob uh, perform a flavor chambers so that Alice learns uh, the label, uh, uh, the encoding of X, and Bob learns nothing about uh, Alice in book. So for example, here S equal to 0, 1, 0. So now uh, Alice have the gobble, uh, gobble of F, F and Y, F of gobble F, the, in, uh, the gobble inputs. So now Alice can uh, uh, compute the circuit f of x and y, and then sends the outputs to Bob, who later decrypted it. And this protocol is uh, secure again against uh, semiotic setting when the party just follow the protocol. However, it's, it doesn't secure again uh, uh, Melissa Bob, who uh, doesn't follow the protocol. And in this work, we focus on the problems. We are trying to reduce the cost of uh, Melissa Xiao protocol. So now we're looking at more detail about uh, Melissa's Bob. The simple case is uh, Melissa Bob can construct an incorrect circuit. So for example, the simple case is uh, Bob construct a function of uh, a function uh, g, x, and y, that's our book, the Alice input. So it means that Al Bob learns uh, Alice input and Alice loses all privacy. Uh, and so also, if Bob just gobble the incorrect circuit, so we don't have the, we don't receive the correct uh, f of x and y. 
So they have several promising approaches to address Melissa circuit two party computations. And uh, one of them is Cus and Chu paradigms, uh, which is introduced by Lindo and Pinkas 2007. So the main idea is uh, instead of uh, gobble Bob gobble one circuit, now he gobble many circuits and send this to uh, Alex. Uh, Alex to a subset of circuits and check with Bob. And check with Bob. If all of them is uh, correct, so it means that Alex believe in Bob. And, uh, and evaluate on the remaining circuit and then take the majority output. And now the main question is how many circuits do we need to send in order to get the majority output are correct? So this is called replication factor. Uh, so they have, uh, in 2013, they have two papers, uh, one by Han, Kass, and Ivan, and another by Lindo. Uh, they, uh, they propose a protocol uh, that requires only 40 circuits to achieve two, two of four, minus 40 security. And when thinking about, when, when, when consider amortized setting, so they have several works uh, try to reduce uh, uh, the replication factor. And, and now, when we, we want to do 100 executions, we, we require to send only five GABO functions. And another, another technique is introduced by Anisio and Olandi 2009. So the idea is, uh, instead of both GABO the whole circuit, uh, now Bob can GABO a GET. And particularly, it's either AND GET, because we have some crypto technique that can easily handle the XOR get. So now we assume that we have the end uh, get so far. So Alice, so Bob gobble many end uh, gets and then send it to Alice. Uh, Alice, uh, similar to standard cut and choose, Alice choose a subset of the circuit and then check with Bob. If all of them are correct, so it means Alice believe that Bob is a nice person, so she continue put to play with him. So an uh, important step in in Lego is is called soldering. So now Alice use a remaining gate to solder it together and to get the function f of x and y. And by doing this. Um, the Lego allows uh, pre-processing that is independent of, of the function f of x and y. Uh, now we look at a, a cost for the Lego. So uh, for replication factor, uh, Lego have some uh, in, a syntactic improvement uh, than standard cut and choose. Uh, but in Lego, we need a soldering for each wire. And now come to our approach, uh, which is very natural. So instead of consider how circuits like in standard cut and choose, or in, or in the get level in Lego, we consider components, which is include which includes uh, many end, many end get. And so what actually meaning about the components? So we can look at the like IES CBC Mac sitting. Here we have 16 IS. So we can consider one IS is the components, or two IS is the components, and so on and so far. So uh, in this, they have many programs that uh, have the identical components. So for example, a loop. And the, in this, the similar idea considered in that, that paper. However, it's for semiotic setting. And our, our work is on Melissa setting. So the semionic uh, model somehow is simple, the simple than uh, Melissa's model. So uh, looking at all three approaches, uh, standard cut and choose, uh, Lego cut and choose, and deploy cut and choose. So they have two things uh, effects on the performance of Melissa's uh, gel protocol. 
the first one is uh, replication faster. So it means the number of uh, uh, components you, you need to send. So in standard code and choose, the component is the whole circuit. So they have the high replication factor. And in level, the component is just a get. So they have the low replication factor. And now another one is soldering cost. So it means that we need less soldering is better. And in standard cut and choose, because it is the whole circuit, so we don't need any soldering. But in Lego, we, we need a soldering for each wire. Yes. So it, they have the high uh, soldering, uh, soldering cost. And our main idea is want to just balance between uh, replication factor and the soldering cost. Yes. And uh, as a result, we have the lower replication factor because we have uh, uh, more number of components than standard cut and choose. And we also have lower, uh, lower soldering cost because we have fewer overall num uh, number of inputs and output uh, wires than uh, Lego cut and choose. And uh, in our protocol, we uh, also we allow to you know, to gobble many different kind of components in a single circuit. So this is indeed the this is indeed a efficient protocol when the programs have many identical components, and we implement our protocol and we found that we have seven times faster than one Malazimov and CAS uh, this year, and five times faster than uh, Ringdo and Rosulet last year for a certain circuits. So to make the law become practical, uh, they have several issues. And it, in this talk, uh, I'm going to focus on the issue of soldering. And another issue can be dealt with uh, as well on the paper. And I'm first uh, revise the soldering techniques of Lego. Uh, and then we want to show that why Lego soldering uh, doesn't work for the law. Very popular uh, crypto technique is called free XOR. So it means the label of each wire have the same uh, de uh, different delta. So now look at uh, we have t here we have two uh, two gates and zero label is gobbled by A. So it means one label have to be gobbled by A XOR delta. And a similar similar thing for a red uh, gate. So now we want to solder, solder it. In, in the Lego soldering, this, this is the soldering is just the X of zero label. So the, X, the soldering is equal to A, X or B. And when you learn about label B, I mean blue here, blue, the label of blue uh, get, you can compute the, the label of red get by following this, the formula. So, uh, so, so soldering is quite easy when all get have the same delta. And another important thing is uh, cut and choose. In cut and choose, we cannot open the garbage garbage gas because we will review the delta, and it's, it means that it will review many information about uh, input and output uh, input uh, about the party input. So to be secure during cut and choose, um, in Lego, a guest is checking on the single input components only, uh, com input combining, uh, combination only. So, so here we have, so here we have uh, two input wire. So it's allowed to catch uh, the chicken with probability one over four. And the reason work. Uh, by Zun and Han, he, they propose an efficient uh, soldering technique that allows to catch the chicken with probability one and a half. And, and in, uh, in the floor, uh, because we, we, we got we, we a component, so 
So maybe we have n input wire. So now uh, to to cut the chipping, we need we need a probability one over two power n. So it's very small. So it's so it lit, we need that uh, so it means that we need a higher replication factor. So it's not good. And the solution is uh, in the flow we use a different delta for each component. Uh, and by doing that, we allow to to cut to cut uh, to get the cheating with probability one, only one here. So, so now looking at more detail about our soldering uh, technique. So, so, so here we have uh, two components, two different components. One is blue and one is red. And you can see here we have different kind of. Uh, 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 we have uh, different number of inputs, a wire, here is four and here is three. So now we use different uh, delta and zero, zero label of, of uh, this component by A and one label of this component by A XOR to delta one and similar to here. And now we want to solder the, uh, solder it, uh, solder two uh, components together and the requirement is that the true labels are soldering correctly. So what does it mean? Uh, so it means uh, it means a zero label of blue components soldered to a zero label of red component by by A X or B. And and the same thing for the true label. So the, the problem, you can see the problem here is that the evaluator must know the true values to soldering because they have different value here. And similar to this paper, we use the indicator bit for each component. So we replay, so we use uh, a sigma one to encoding by A and not sigma one encoding by A X or one. So in level, the sigma one here is zero, but in our our protocol, the sigma one here is choose random, so it don't leak anything. So and similar to uh, a red, uh, a red component. And now when we when knowing the x of sigma one and sigma two, you can solve it uh, easily. Uh, one one con contribution in our works is we build a, a kind of real tool for program uh, for for the circuit two party computations, and we extend the reason for get uh, compilers to that that get the input is the kind of uh, C uh, C uh, C language C plus plus or something, and then we put in the free free get extensions. And then we get a, a circuit. And the main functions in the uh, in the 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 GABO circuit will say will describe how to soldering. And then we put it in the, the floor, and then we get f of uh, s and y. Uh, so now we are going to uh, uh, evalu evaluate our protocol. We first choose a random circuit. So this is the kind of uh, optimistic evaluations. And we choose a circuit with two power of n and uh, gets. And clearly, we can de uh, split it to uh, two, uh, two, two components. And each component has two power, power of n minus 1. Or maybe you can split by 4, and so on and so far. So now each component has Two power of t, two power of t, uh, uh, guess. So we evaluate our protocol, and we found find out that we have, uh, 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 we we find out that the ideal uh, components have like two power of thirteen or two power of fourteen uh, guess is the ideal component. But again, this is a kind of uh, optimistic evalu evaluations, and. And the standard cut and chew is something on the left hand side, 
and the Lego got and do something on my right hand side. Uh, so now we go go into evaluate uh, a real a kind of real functions, and we choose IS CBC mat uh, sitting. So again, we have sitting IS, and naturally it can be split by sitting components, and one component have one IS, or uh, component have two IS, or so on and so far. So it means sitting IS is a, a kind of uh, a similar to standard cut and choose. And we evaluate our protocol in amortized setting. So, and we found out, we found that uh, the components have four IES is the best component. So you can see the you can see the line. Uh, the, this is the like a kind of switch. You know, this is a kind of uh, good uh, execution. Uh, give a good result. And and we compare to uh, we compare to uh, uh, previous works, and uh, so we have around uh, two or five two or uh, uh, four times faster than uh, Rindo and Roselec uh, last year. And for the single executions, uh, we compare with one Mozolomov and Cas uh, this the paper the paper this year. And we have around um, like two or three times faster than for this for this circuit. And here is some concurrent works uh, that the, the first the first one you can hear in net talk and the second one in this afternoon. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, in it we have uh, we have the formula, a kind of yeah. So so we we use the XOR homomorphic encryptions. I know it's XOR homomorphic commitments. Yeah, like similar to the level. Yeah, thank you for the question. Yeah. Hi, thanks for your talk. Uh, do the component sizes always have to be uniform? So it seems like you're assuming that you're deciding on a component size, but uh, maybe you want some components to be larger than other ones. Did you look at that? Yeah. Thank, thanks for the questions. So we have uh, we have like let me let me show you. Mm. So in in our in our protocol, we allow to uh, here the. So we allow to have different kind of components. So here you see here the. So here you see that they have four a kind of this, the blue component and the red component are different. They have different kind of, uh, number of inputs. Here they have four and here they have three. Yeah, and we definitely we allow to many kind, many different kind of components. Because in the program they have many identical components, but they should be different. Yeah. yeah thank you. Uh, further questions? 